Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today is Clash of Wills Day, and we're ready to take on the Thalassa to try and get a rank one. As you can see, we do have a rank one over there um, on the right hand side. Um, and uh, I will say that this one really annoyed me. Um, it, I, I didn't end up taking the exact team that I wanted to originally. I had to make a couple adjustments, um, but it like 90% of the way worked. We were just really coming up short on damage uh, with Tifa in the party, and so we ended up making a swap. So while I was really excited to use Tifa, she just was not working. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on all the modifiers and get into our team, and we can take a look at what we're working with. So we've got Abigail, um, Ong, uh, Nicole, uh, Lord of the Seas, Nicole. Um, we've got Yo, we've got Ayabrea, who's our swap for Tifa, uh, and our, um, our Melissa. I will also say that uh, Tifa gears for this Clash of Wills horribly, horribly. I could get her attack up to about 18,000 um, with full killers and LB damage, um, but that meant that she did not have full true dual wield. Um, it just, depending on your gear, it, it, it is very, very difficult to gear Tifa for this. Um, and so, uh, yeah, as much as I wanted to use her, she just wasn't working out. Um, and Aya, uh, even with just like a really basic imbue, like not even good imbues, is out damaging her like with spades. So like Aya Brea all the way. Let's just do it. Um, that did mean that I had to adjust my rotation a little bit. I was originally going for a turn seven clear. This is a turn eight clear. It still really, really works. Let's take a look at our gear. Um, Abigail, geared wearing normal Abigail stuff. You might be like, why is she wearing the Emperor's ring? Because uh, somebody needs to. Honestly, it does give her good spirit. Um, and nobody else in our party really needs it. Um, so, or has room for it for that matter. Um, but there you go. So she's geared with lots of water and dark. Everybody has status immunity from an item. Um, and she's otherwise just got a lot of HP and stuff. She's also got Eye of the Dragon. The I will say that this this clear does use some limited stuff just to allow for chaining and things like that. Uh, it is what it is. If you don't want to do the Eye of the Dragon extreme Nova chaining, um, you could use like blue waves instead. Um, like give her a blue wave, give Nicole a blue wave. Uh, that's better than nothing. But Eye of the Dragon allows her to chain with um, with Ong uh, and with Nicole several times during the fight. So she's she's gonna be doing some a little bit of damage, you know, it's there. And she's uh, wearing uh, this vision card. Doesn't have to be this vision card. She can be wearing her own, um, but just make sure you're picking something with spirit um, and uh, uh, the resistances to water and darkness. Otherwise, there you go. Um, and her her immunity is coming from discernment. Here's Ong. Ong's got his STMR and he is geared with 300% beast, aquatic, and dragon LB true double hand all that stuff he, he's got a magister's ring for um for chain cap and then uh, otherwise he's got killers so killers and gear lots of killers um aquatic killer is like the hardest thing to gear in the game so i hope you've got a lot there you go um here is our nicole so nicole is wearing in the base form honestly he could take paws off um you could take paws off and put on like treasured memorial ring if you have it um, he does not need pause. Um, so treasure memorial ring is fine. Um, but uh, that way we're feeling lots of morale on turn one. Um, and he's just got some like stuff. Bahamut synergy to fill up the Esper gauge. He's going to be using his field. Nicole has his fields crowned so that his um, when he summons Leviathan, it puts up a 50% imperil field that goes nicely with his flood spell to put a nice imperil on the boss. Um, we don't have a really good water imperil on this team, so we're going with the biggest imperil field we have on my account, which is 50%. Um, and uh, there you go. He's also got a source of guts, um, and he's got a source of um, status immunity. You know, if you've uh, actually he's got multiple sources of guts, status immunity can come from lots of different things. I just have to be wearing a super ribbon. Uh, as far as his brave shift form, he's wearing a dagger. Um, why am I wearing a dagger? I can't remember why I'm wearing a dagger. Oh, because it's the it's like the strongest attack weapon he has that Abigail's weapon imperil puts up uh, an imperil for. Um, so rather than trying to force him to wear like a fist or something like that, because I just I guess I could. I've got room for it. I could take off Code of the Samurai and put on like a quick fist and give him a Kyo STMR or something like that. But he's chaining Extreme Nova with the Lone Swordsman card. Um, so there you go. Like I said, lots of limited stuff in this clear. 
Sorry about that. Um, but hey, I did get this to work. Um, so there you go. Nicole. Doing Nicole things. Kyo's here. Um, he's got blizzard orbs for the uh, occasional blade crack that he's going to put on the boss. Try and get rid of some, um, some buffs and stuff that the boss puts up. Otherwise, just geared for like... Typical clash stuff like Philosopher's Stone, Pure Lotus, just to make make sure we're filling morale, discernment. Uh, there you go. Uh, he's got his own banner card, vision card, and then in the shift form, he's got all the killers. So all of the times he's really focusing on doing damage, he's got the killers. Uh, my um, my Ifrit has the Beast Node unlocked, the extra Beast Killer, so we've got that going on. Um, otherwise, he's just got killers uh, and normal stuff. There you go, yo. Aya Brea, um, again, wearing some normal stuff. Now, she's got the Jane Moot. Jane Moot. I actually never even use this. I could take this off. I guess she could wear the Emperor's Ring, but I don't really want to. So we'll, we'll just put on something else. Uh, you, I never use the Jade Moon pendant, so we'll just put on Crystal Gloves. That way she's got it in both forms. There you go. Uh, higher attack. There you go. We're not really even attacking. I don't. She's not even wearing abilities. My goodness. Okay. Well, she's wearing Hyo's Vision card. Uh... In the shift form, she's got all the same gear on, um, and then just killers and uh, stuff like that. My goodness. Not even wearing abilities in the base form. Oops. And then Melissa. Um, she's our passive provoke evasion unit. Um, sort of. You don't really need all that much. Um, you could put on more. Actually, she's not even wearing passive. Why is she not wearing passive? I oh, it's because I hit load. It doesn't matter. This clear works. Well, this clear works just the way she is. You don't have to have a passive, passive provoke evasion unit. Just do this. There you go. A peppermint rod. You could probably lose the peppermint rod. We go overkill on the morale. Um, you're fine. You don't. You don't need it all. It's fine. It, you're, we're good. This clear works. So we're gonna get into it, um, and then we will. Uh, I need to reload here, and we'll pop the actions up on the screen, and we will do this clear. So let's see here. Get the gear out of the way and put the actions up where are the actions here we go and um, i'm going to be following a turn chart and the turn chart as always is going to be in the comments and in the description of the video so if you need that turn chart definitely check that out we're going to start with aya brea aya is going to do barrier gene heal and haste um, that's going to be putting up evasion stacks status immunity buff um, remove any imperils that we've got, all kind of good stuff. Um, and then Melissa is going to give us a Shelga for some mitigations, um, Chronic Flow to start filling morale, and Parasol Shield for more racial mitigations and re-raise and all that stuff. Our Melissa is also EX3, so she puts re-raise on the party anyway. Um, so really, that's just there for the mitigations. It's all good though. Abigail is going to just do really basic stuff, cover, and then use her anti-physical, anti-magic mechanisms. That's going to put some breaks on the boss, although we're going to put a better one up anyway. But the bigger thing is the mitigations again. Um, uh, next, we're going to go with Nicole. Uh, Nicole is going to go to the shift form. There we go. That He started in the base form to get all that like S uh, morale fill stuff, and he's going to go to the shift form um, to do Aquatic Slayer and true water infusion and then flood our flood is awakened to plus three so it puts up a nice imperil on the boss there you go and then ong is going to use awakened divinity and then impaling arrow impaling arrow removes boss status effects and then puts some breaks on the boss technically and then does a little bit of damage fills morale it's really nice um really just focusing on getting rid of the attack and magic buff um, and then using uh, Hunter of the Mystical. There we go. In between all of that, our Hyo is going to have a very nice um, set of killer buffs on him for when he does a little bit of damage here. He's going to start by doing Chris Crimson Undermine and then Breaker Claw, both of them. Um, and just do a little self-chaining. Looking to do, you know, 1% damage. We want to just be around 99%. We're good. Okay. Abigail's going to jump in front. We're going to take a little bit of damage. Not too bad. We're also doing a little bit of evasion because of the uh, Ayabrea stacks. And we're looking good. Let all the autofill go. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is with uh, Abigail, we are going to use uh, Contingency Plan. 
uh, to keep on filling morale and give us mirage stacks and stuff like that and just keep the uh the buffs the mitigation buffs fresh there we go lots of morale fill um ong is going to be using um rolling mist and then two swift arrows nicole is going to summon leviathan go ahead and do that right now put up that nice big field 50 percent, looking good and now uh hyo is going to chain we're going to do uh refined stance and then just two breaker claws i is going to shift and she's going to do Awaken Mitochondria for the modifier buff and two P90s. And before we do any of that, um, Melissa is going to use Minutes of Might. She's going to use Beast Killer on Hyo. So Hyo's now got all the killers. Actually, everybody has all the killers, technically. Um, and then we can use Bardarkja just for some mitigations and uh, dark resistance. And then we're just going to chain all these three together. Um, we're hoping to do, you know, a little bit of damage. Actually, uh, yeah, we're going to channel these. We're hoping to do a little bit of damage. Not very much, honestly. Like maybe one, maybe two points. Yeah, 98%. That's fine. All right, very safe turn here. Like nothing happens. <laughs> there you go. Boss fills a little bit of morale. Woo. So do we. Look at all that morale fill. Okay. Here's where we're going to do our baby burst. Baby burst on turn three. All right, we're going to do uh, shared immunity. We're gonna go ahead and give killers to Ong. So beast killer, dragon killer, that's also gonna fill some morale. Yep, on to Ong. There we go. And then Abigail's gonna do claw of the dragon. Nicole is going to chain blazing red flash with her. And then Ong is gonna use the regular LB. Uh, shift LB with Hyo. And Aya is going to do her shift LB as well. So we're going to start with uh, Nicole and Abigail. We're going to wait just a little bit for the chain to build up and then send the other three. Um, going to look something like this. And we're hoping to land like between like 75, 78% damage. Hopefully. I've seen it also land at like 80% and that's also okay. The, but our goal is that we really want to push the boss's HP threshold here so that it heals and like spends a little bit of time. Um, we can just get that heal out of the way, basically. So it goes like this. One. Seventy-seven, I'll take it. Boss is probably going to go up to about like 83%. Something like that. Maybe a little higher. We're also into mania mode right now. So we're getting like all the bad stuff happening. Mania mode and boss healing, uh, but it's okay. We're getting that healing out of the way first. There you go, 82%, I'll take it. There you go. Now that looks really painful. It's gonna be all right. We have a plan for that. All right, first things first. Abigail's gonna use her SLB. There we go. Um, and Hyo is going to downshift and use focused energy. And so is Ayabrea. Focus energy. Start filling up our focus gems. Melissa is going to go last. Ong is going to use a placid concentration, not poised, placid concentration. There we go. And then two swift arrows. We're gonna do a little miniature burst here. Not even just, not even a baby burst, a miniature burst here on the next turn. Um, Nicole, to get us ready for that, is going to use True Water, uh, Protectica, and Flood. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and let On go. Doing a little bit of damage, just teeny tiny little bit, right? And then Melissa is going to do um, uncontrollable darkness, and then she's going to do shared immunity, and then she's going to do Shelga. That's going to imbue the boss with dark, so any physical damage that we take, it's going to heal us up this turn. Or any, any physical and any dark magic damage that we take, it's going to heal us up. Yep. 
usually we do pretty well here. So let's see what happens. Takes a thousand years. Whew, very close. Very close. It's all good. Hey, we got a blade crack too. Nice. Okay. Now we're gonna do our miniature burst. We'll get it. We'll get everybody else other stuff out of the way first. Abigail's gonna use her cover and um, her mechanisms just to keep the mitigations fresh. There we go. Um, Aya's gonna use um, barrier, gene heal, and haste. That's gonna reduce the cooldown on her focused energy skill. And I, um, uh, Melissa is also gonna use her SLB on Aya Brea, further reducing the cooldown of her focused energy skill. And here's what our, um, here's what our burst is gonna look like. We're gonna use Sun Shower, which is Ong's SLB, powered up by his 150 Amplify, and then also Focus Strike from Hyo. Um, and then Lord of the Seas, Nicole is just going to chain into that with Flood uh, three times. And we're aiming, you know, again, in the 70s. We just wanna get below 80% um, and just kinda see how we can do. We could even give ourselves, you know, some buffs if we were really crazy. Like you could use attack and magic. Hey, why not go ahead and boost our water and dark resistance? You know, if you really wanna go nuts, you could use the defense and spirit buff, you know, whatever. So let's just go ahead and do some chaining, just really sending all three of them about the same time. Okay, 75%, doing pretty good. I like that. Notice the boss does not heal back up because it only heals at that 80% threshold one time. Um, that's why I like to go ahead and get it out of the way, hit as hard as we can, and then just keep on pushing to try and get the boss, you know, a little closer. But we do not want to go below 50%, otherwise it'll heal again, uh, and that's bad. So we only want to do that when we're killing the boss in a few turns. All right, we're doing great. Turn six. And we're actually gonna get ready to burst on turn eight, so we're gonna start our prep right now. Um, Abigail is going to, um, she does not have contingencies, that's the next point, next turn. So we're gonna do her, just her mechanisms and cover all over again, no big deal. All right, Ong is going to hunt her the mystical, uh, reawaken his divinity. Um, and then use Clear Sun for an LB buff and morale fill for the party. There we go. Nicole is going to use um, True Liquid for everybody, True Water Infusion for everybody. Um, and then Elemental Power Water for Hyo. Um, and then, um, this is all allies, right? Yeah. Um, and then Elemental Power for Hyo. I did that right. True water for everybody, elemental power for Hyo, um, and then just a flood, just to keep the, the imperil fresh. Uh huh, yep, there we go. Hyo is going to, on turn six, we are gonna Crimson Undermine, master this sword, and one of the Breaker Claws. Aya is going to shift and use her Awakened Mitochondria, get ready for her second burst. And then Melissa is going to keep us safe with a Parasol Shield, a Shared Immunity, and a Bardark Jet. Again, you could use uh, Morale Buffs if you really want. Keep keep Yo and his attack really high. You know, we're already at 24,000 attack, but, you know, why not? Here we go. Did another point of damage, so 74%. We're looking good. Next turn is our big setup, and then we'll be bursting on turn eight. Notice that um, Ong's rolling mist went away, so we're gonna put that back up right now. Nice, we got blade cracks. Boss didn't have any buffs, but it's always nice to see those. Alrighty. Turn seven. So 
Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and, and use Contingency Plane. That's gonna keep us very, very safe for this next turn, as well as the mechanisms. Ong is gonna put up a uh, Rolling Mist. Um, and then use, oh, we have to wait. We can't do Ong yet. Um, Aya has to use her last bit of focused energy, which just came online this turn. Notice there's a little tiny shred missing and we're missing that last gem. So there we go. Now we can do bonus time. Um, so Ong will do um, Rolling Mist for the field um, and then uh, Poised Concentration for the bigger amp and Enduring Love. There we go. There we go, nice. Um, Hyo will just use um, Refined Stance and then the two Breaker Claws. Uh, Melissa will, before he does that, go ahead and buff Hyo up with um, Beast Killer, because we already get Dragon Killer from somebody else, um, from from uh, from from Ong. But we could go ahead and do Dragon as well, just for morale fill and keeping it fresh. Minutes of Might for everybody. Here we go. And one last little bit of love from Nicole. He says, hey, you need a little more water and a little more floods. All right. Go ahead and use our buffs so we can use like HP, MP, keep it all, keep us all topped off with defense, attack and magic for Hyo. Um, you could even use the remedial will, get rid of any bad stuff if there was any bad stuff there. And then Hyo can just unload. We're at 73%, we're looking great. We are now in bonus time. Basically nothing happens this turn because of the boss's breaks and stats and um, bonus time badness and uh, covering and contingency plans and all that stuff. We are in such good shape. It's gonna be great. Last thing we need is from Nicole uh, and Melissa. They're both gonna give us a little bit of something. Uh, Nicole is gonna give us Aquatic Slayer. There we go. And then Melissa is going to just power up on as best as she can. Why am I not powering up Ayabrea, you might say? Well, uh, honestly, Ong um, has the 180 Amplify. So he's gonna get a little more boost out of it than Ayabrea, who is just kind of rocking the, the field and the uh, the base in peril or the, ba the base imbue from Nicole. Um, seconds of support is gonna go to Hyo. And then last but not least, we're gonna use Resounding Will for everybody else. So now we're doing good. So Ong looking good with 20,000. Aya's looking good with 20, or Hio's 24. Aya 22. Nicole, eight. He's not attacking though. Uh, but Abigail is with, a, with her 5,000 attack. You know, so we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of chaining here. So Abigail is gonna chain with Claw of the Dragon. She's gonna be chaining with Hyo, or um, Ong using his, um, his LB here. If you have uh, an EX3 Ong, you would have his um, SLB here. That's totally fine. Um, use the SLB. It doesn't matter. It's going to do more damage. But, you know, we're using what we got. Hyo is going to use Crimson Fist and Chain with Aya. So it's going to go, you know, Abigail and Ong, and then uh, Hyo and Aya. Um, something kind of like this. And there you have it. Turn 8. Boss is dead. Very, very safe. We had one turn that looked like it was risky, but it really wasn't because of all of our planning. Um, and we have, a, we have a rank one clear. So we'll take a look at the damage breakdown and then uh, get into it. There's all of our score criteria is looking good. Um, and, you know, Aya and Ong looking pretty even, pretty close. And then Hyo rolled a little bit low, honestly. Um, but we still did really well. We still got it done in eight turns. So I'm pleased with it. Um, not bad for getting it done within the first 24 hours, and uh, nothing else I want here right now. We'll see if I get anything in any subsequent clears. Uh, but there's a, there's a rank one. So as far as like, who would you swap? If I had the option, I would definitely swap out um, Nicole for like Metza, right? For a better Imperil with a slightly worse field. Um, it, it, it ends up being better. Metza also has Focus Plus. Um, if I had, um, uh, I, I actually just got 
uh, last will Esper of Destruction um, off of a free pull, which is pretty cool. But he's stuck at EX zero until I until I get some fragments for him. So like I would put him over Iabrea probably, um, or um, you know anybody else who could give us Aquatic Killer would be good. Um, honestly, Nicole having the field and Aquatic Killer is pretty good. Uh, if I wasn't going to use Hyo, I'd probably use like the Guardian of the Underworld Chow, um, who could also give everybody else 100, 100% Amplify. Um, that would be good. Um, so th th definitely some things. If I wasn't going to use Melissa, uh, Melissa's honestly really perfect for this um, because she's got the Beast Killer, the Mitigations, the Morale Fill. Mer Melissa's like the perfect, the perfect unit. And honestly, Abigail is too. Having... Having the aquatic mitigation and the beast mitigation on demand, both really, really good. Like, this team really keeps you safe. Uh, Abigail's also got the Mirage stacks. I has got the Mirage stacks. We got, you know, everything we need. It, it, it ended up working really well. Um, could you do more damage with a different team? Probably. Um, but, you know, I got this done with this team. So I'm pleased with it. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, um, Ong, you could definitely replace Ong. Like, if you didn't have Ong and you had Chow, take, take Chow. You know, it's like Chow has arcane supplementation um, and that's, you know, do you, do you want more killer or do you want arcane supplementation, which buffs everybody? It's like it's it, it's, you know, goes like this and they do pretty similar damage, honestly. Um, but Ong definitely gears easier for this. Chow does have a little difficult time gearing for this because aquatic magic killer is hard to come by. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go. So hopefully that's helpful to you. If you've got any questions, let me know. Check the turn chart in the description and in the comments. And um, let me know what team you're thinking about taking. Or if you have any ideas for other teams you'd maybe like to see and maybe try, um, I'd be happy to take a look. And we'll, uh, we'll do that in the next video. Uh, whatever that is. Have a good one, guys.